Okay, as promised, we are back with our discussion on Lewis structures. And we are going to continue now with doing the Lewis structure for a diatomic molecule or element, in this case, oxygen gas. There are two oxygen atoms, uh, each in group 16, so six valence electrons a piece. That gives us 12 valence to work with. And we can try drawing the Lewis structure by putting a, one pair between the oxygen atoms and then giving each oxygen a full octet. And let's see what we end up with here. We've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. We're only allowed 12, so obviously that's not a valid Lewis structure. So sometimes it is necessary to share two pair of electrons between atoms. We would call that a double covalent bond. Now, when that happens, we have uh, four electrons that belong to this oxygen for part of the time and this oxygen. So when I complete the octet, I only need two pair on this oxygen or four more electrons to give this one eight for part of the time. And the same is true on the other side. So we've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, which is exactly what we're allowed. Now the shape should be pretty straightforward here. Um, it's going to be a linear molecule. I can sort of represent that to you. We're sharing two pair. And of course, this is a, these are the non-bonding pairs on each oxygen represented here. We call that a double covalent bond, much stronger than a single bond. And that shape, whenever there are two atoms, has to be linear. And the polarity should be obvious as well. These are the same atoms, both oxygens. So there's no electronegativity difference. So we would say that that is nonpolar. Let's do nitrogen quickly. In fact, at any time, feel free to pause the video and try to work on these yourself and then check your work with my work. Uh, we have 10 valence to work with. Um, I'm going to jump right to the punchline. You'll find it becomes necessary for the nitrogen atoms to share three pair. And of course, this nitrogen only needs one more pair to give it a full octet. And the same is true with this nitrogen. Once again, that's linear. Whenever we only have two atoms bonded to each other, that shape must be a linear shape. I've built that one for you here as well. We can see there are three pair being shared between the nitrogens, non-bonding on each side that are, that's represented here. Once again, no electronegativity difference. So these guys, or this guy's considered to be nonpolar. All right, now here we have an ion, the hypochlorite ion. You'll see we have a negative charge here. What we do with that is we're going to add a valence electron to our total because this ion has gained an electron. So chlorine has seven valence, oxygen has six, and then we're going to add one more to our total. So we have 14 valence electrons here. So we'll put Cl and O next to each other. We'll put a pair between them. We'll give oxygen its full octet and chlorine its full octet. And we've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. That's just what we're allowed. Now we've had to add an electron and to show someone that as they read this, we actually put brackets around ions, at least their Lewis structures, and the charge on the outside of that bracket. Your Lewis structure is not complete until that's been done. Now, of course, there are just two atoms, so the shape must be linear again. But the bond here is polar, and of course the dipole can't cancel here. We have oxygen, which is more electronegative than chlorine, so there is a net dipole moving in that direction. So this side is negative, this side is positive, so this is a polar molecule. Of course it's an ion, so we'd expect uh, if you have an ion, we'd have a polar particle there. You're going to have an uneven distribution of charge. We have an extra electron here. Alright, now this next one presents a few obstacles. CH4O. We have four valence from carbon. Each hydrogen has one and oxygen has six. So you can see we have 14 valence again if I did my math correctly. Now if we try to draw something like this, CH4 with an O coming off of one of those hydrogens. You see it doesn't work because that hydrogen has two pairs, which we can't do. So this is not valid. But perhaps we could try something like this. 
we'll put three hydrogens here, and then we'll put the oxygen before that hydrogen, give that oxygen a full octet. We've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, that's just what we're allowed, and that is a valid Lewis structure for CH4O. Now we talk about the electronic geometry, I'm going to talk about the geometry about that center atom. And you can see around the central atom there are four pairs. And these four pairs would form a tetrahedron, or a tetrahedral geometry. Tetrahedral. And also, if we looked at the oxygen atom, it also has four pairs. And whenever we see four pairs, whether they're bonding or not, the electronic geometry will be tetrahedral. Now the bond angle, in this case angles, will be a bit different. Right here between hydrogen and hydrogen, that's not 90 kiddos, remember? That's going to be 109.5. Okay, 109.5 from this hydrogen to this hydrogen. Remember, if you just look at the carbon atom, there are four atoms stuck to it. All of them are bonding and that's 109.5, not 90 degrees. Now over here, between this carbon and hydrogen, we see four pairs. You would expect 109.5 degrees, but we have two non-bonding pairs. Remember about non-bonding pairs. They take up about, a little bit more actually, two degrees um, extra space. So they decrease the bond angle by a little bit more than two degrees each. So we're going to take away a little bit more than 4 degrees. This angle happens to be about 105 degrees. Now you can do your spaceship analogy of some pulling this way of different strength and this way. This will definitely be a polar, oops, boy, I hope that was on the screen for you, a polar molecule. Okay, let's try this one. ASO4. 3 negative. Let's find arsenic. We don't see that very often on our Lewis structures. Arsenic is in the same family as nitrogen, so it has five valence electrons. So five valence. Each oxygen we know has six, and it's three negative, so we're going to add three to our total here. So we end up with this. So we have 5 plus 24 is uh, 29 plus 3 more. We have 32 valence to worry about here. Put arsenic in the center. And we'll put our oxygens here. And we'll go ahead and add our full octets for each oxygen. Notice arsenic already has a full octet. So 2, 4, 6, 8. 10, 12, 14, now let's try that again, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. I'm going to put brackets around it because it is an ion and the charge on the outside. Now the electronic geometry about the central atom, once again we see four pairs. I don't care if they're bonding or not, we're just looking at the four pairs. Whenever you see four pairs of electrons, we call that tetrahedral. and all four pair are bonding. So the molecular shape is also tetrahedral. And that angle, what is it? That's right, 109.5 degrees. Now this is an ion, and we will call all ions polar. Have a three negative charge here. All right, moving right along, SO2, sulfur dioxide. So six valence for the sulfur, six valence for each oxygen. I have 18 valence electrons here to deal with. Now I'm going to put sulfur in the center here. And we'll try a single bond between the sulfur and each oxygen. We'll give each oxygen a full octet. And let's not forget to give our sulfur a full octet. And let's just check to make sure we've used the proper number. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Hmm. We're only allowed 18. What are we going to do? Well, let's try a double bond on one side and a single on the other. And this oxygen only would need two more pair to complete its octet. The sulfur needs one more pair. And this oxygen needs three more pair. 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Perfect. Well, you would think um, that if you could see this molecule with a really powerful microscope that doesn't exist, that you would see one double and one single bond. Well, it turns out the length of bonds can be measured. And you would expect um, a double bond to be shorter than a single bond. It's, the double bonds are shorter and stronger than single bonds. So you'd expect this side of the molecule, if you could see it, to be closer to the sulfur than this oxygen. When in fact they're equal distances apart. And it turns out the length of each bond is a little bit longer than a double bond and a bit shorter than a single bond. So it turns out that that second bond is shared between both oxygens and we really end up with a bond and a half. Now the way that we illustrate that is by showing something called a resonance structure and that's showing the double bond on each side. So this would be the correct Lewis structure. Both of these together would be the correct Lewis structure for sulfur dioxide. Okay? We show resonance. The double bond does not belong to that oxygen nor this one. It's shared between both. Now, let's see if I can build this for you here. Looks like somebody got into my molecular model kit here. Doggone it. Well, let's see what I can come up with really quickly for you without taking too much time here. Um, well, I think we can manage with, let's see, all right. So we have our four pair around sulfur, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? And we have one bond, doubly bonded to an oxygen. So we'll go ahead and do this here. And we're just going to pick one of these Lewis structures. I realize that that's really a bond and a half and it's sharing time between both oxygens. But for Lewis structures, or for shape, bond, angle, and polarity, we'll pick one of these two to draw the model. Then we'll have what appears to be a singly bonded oxygen over here on the other side. So we end up with something like that with the non-bonding pair on my sulfur. You'll notice that's not linear. That's bent, isn't it? So the shape of the molecule is bent. The shape of the electron pairs is not bent because we would count, let's see, one, two, well, there's four pairs. And whenever you see a multiple bond, we treat that multiple bond as if it were one pair. So we would see one, two, three pairs. Now, three pairs as far away from each other as possible, we would end up with a shape something like this. Three pairs as far away from each other as possible. These would be sp2 hybrid orbitals here, and they would fit on one plane. And so we would call the electronic geometry of these three shapes trigonal planar. Since two of them are bonding, we end up with a bent molecule. Now in a perfect trigonal planar arrangement, we'd expect that angle to be 120 degrees. Now not 180 like the diagram might look like. We have that non-bonding pair here which pushes these other bonding pairs down. So you'd expect 120, but recall that non-bondings take up a bit more space than non-bonding non pairs and they reduce the bond angle by about 2 degrees. So instead of a perfect 120 degrees here, we would actually end up with about 118 degrees. And that molecule, if you use our spaceship analogy, we have two spaceships here, nothing on the other side, it would move. So it would be a polar molecule. Let's do one more for part two, and we're going to have to make a part three for this video, it looks like. This is taking a bit longer than I had expected. Sulfur trioxide. Sulfur has six valence. Each oxygen has six valence. We're allowed 24 valence. Let's try this right away, see if it works for me. 
put two pair on that oxygen, three more pair on this one, and three more pair on this one. And that sulfur already has a full octet. Let's see if I've used 24. There are eight around this oxygen, eight around this oxygen, eight around this one. That gives me 24. That is not a complete Lewis structure. Turns out it's not one double and two singles. It's actually um, a bond and a third for each sulfur to oxygen. That, single, uh, that second bond is shared in three positions. So we'd have to draw resonance structures to represent that. And that takes a little bit of time, but I'm sorry. That's just the way it's done. Now I'm going to have to continue this on part three because my time limit on my video is just about ready to expire. So we'll stop with this part for part two. That would be my Lewis structure for sulfur trioxide. We'll continue with these others in just a moment.